Hey, what's up, everyone? Well, hopefully, everyone can hear us, and we're working, and everything's functional. We had some slight technical difficulties slight. that may have uh, delayed the stream a little bit, uh, but this is the Dungeon Defenders 2 dev stream. Uh, happy Veterans Day to everyone. Happy Veterans Day. I hope, uh, I'm glad everyone took some time out of their holiday to come watch our stream. Um, our community manager, I am Isom, will be managing the chat today. Uh, I'm sure he will give a re give out some fine dryads and He's goodies. He's probably already given out. He's probably already, already given out a ton of things. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we have a special guest today on our dev stream. Uh, we have a lead developer from Terraria, Yo Riser. So do you want to say hi, Yo Ray? Awesome. And what are we doing today? What are we talking about? I wonder. We're uh, we're talking about some fun stuff. I mean, uh, you know, some maybe like a little bit of content that we added to our games. Just a just a teensy tiny, uh, slight addition. Minor uh, ads. Minor ads. So we're gonna let's get started and start showing some stuff off. Ah, mm -hmm. <sighs> look at that. Look it's that. pretty beautiful. I'm not gonna lie. The art was really fantastic. So the first thing that we're going to talk about in our magical, majestic Terraria crossover reveal <laughs> is uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the map. We added a new map. It's called the Forest Biome. Mm -hmm. uh, the new map also has an incursion. We'll, we'll get to that kind of we'll after we, we go over the map first. Um, but do you kind of want to talk about you know how the Forest Biome came to be and how we decided on that? Yeah. Um, so... We were working on the Dryad for a good bit, probably about maybe early this year is when we designed her out. Uh, but for, uh, for the map, that actually happened like way later. And by that point, we had already seen, uh, or we had already figured out like her, how the Dryad's mechanics are gonna work, her corruption mode, not corruption mode, all that stuff, we had that figured out pretty well. And we obviously wanted the map to kind of represent that struggle between uh, corruption and non-corruption. And we wanted to throw in as many Terraria references as we could. So you'll find some bunnies in there, you'll find the sunflowers, you'll find the Terraria trees, you'll find all that stuff. And it's um, it's actually a remake of a DD1 map. So we took that layout, we updated it a little bit, and we just, uh, you know, our, our team went all out to make it look as Terraria-ish uh, Terraria as possible. And you'll, I mean, you can see right now from what you're looking at, the uh, hub is obviously updated too. Um, it's nice and gloomy, and there's some this little pocket here uh, with a giant portal that will take you actually to the map. You can go up to it and activate it and actually get to play. This one's the incursion one, though. Can we show the uh, the regular first, I guess? Or no, we can go straight to the incursion and just show the map. I can say whichever you want. Either or. Either or. Either way. Yeah, I'm sure everyone noticed from our teasers and the trailers the you know, very iconic, like, Terraria-looking trees. Mm -hmm. You know, that obviously are showing up in our Heroes Marketplace now. They showed up around the portal during a little bit of the teaser. Mm -hmm. um, so what's different about this incursion? This incursion, there's uh, a bunch different about it. Um, at the end of it, you're going to fight a very special boss, uh, which is usually the first boss you fight in Terraria as well, so we're pretty excited about that. And we wanted to kind of capture the spirit of Terraria's like crafting mechanic without obviously implementing, um, you know, a crazy nuts crafting system in Dungeon Defenders 2. So all across the map, uh, you'll see a bunch of like plants, mushrooms, and things like that that Collins and the level design team worked on. They've scattered those places, those pickups all around. You can go pick them up, take them to one of two crafting stations, and you gain a substantial uh, buff that'll help you uh, take on. Uh, the enemies as they spawn and obviously as you like, like see that mushroom there you just pick it up uh, You get a small counter under your health bar that tells you how many seconds you have to actually turn it into something uh, And then you can take it to this little house that you'll see over there And up there there's two crafting stations uh, Terraria fans will recognize both of these stations and then you can just pick the one you want uh, and get a different effect each time that's pretty um, neat. So where did we? So how did we come up with the effect ideas? Well, the, all the effect ideas are actually based on buffs in Terraria itself. You can even see you might be able to make it out in the top left corner. Even the buff icons are the actual icon icons in Terraria when you get them. So it's basically one to one. The same buffs, uh, and thankfully, you know the URI and Real Logic uh, 
were super helpful and sent us all those icons and we were able to plug those in reasonably easily. Does this incursion include any uh, new threats, perhaps? Mm -hmm. It includes uh, two new threats. It includes uh, the demon eye, uh, which behaves pretty much the same way it does in Terraria. Uh, it kind of it's our first like ghost type enemy we're calling it. Uh, it kind of uh, travels through geometry. It just goes straight to you, straight for the player. Uh, and if the player is not around, if all the players are dead or something, it will retarget to get a tower or get the core. Uh, and it'll just keep going, keep attacking, keep trying to pierce and go uh, deal damage to you guys uh, until it's dead. And obviously on the last wave, you will be able, or you'll fight the demon eye, uh, and that's, that's a whole other, whole other encounter. I can't wait to show, I want to show that so bad, but we probably, we have to get to the last wave <laughs> first. Um, so yeah, Yobra, do you want to talk about uh, maybe... Are you guys adding any little enemy things to your game as well? Uh, we are actually adding a whole invasion based on the Oakland army. Um, we have an ogre, we have... Uh, including, including what enemies? <laughs> uh, well, let's see, we have the goblins, we have the goblin bombers, we have the ogre, uh, which stomps and does all the things you will see him doing in Dungeon Commanders 2. We have uh, the dark mage also doing like raising skeletons and killing other enemies. Uh, we also have the Rakens, which are uh, tanky uh, and annoying, as you can uh, remember, in every single level. Um, the enemies all uh, do what you'll see them doing in Dungeon Defenders. Uh, we try to make it as authentic as possible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. And uh, the Ogre is like a boss encounter, or what is that like? Um, it's a boss encounter, just like in Dungeon Defenders, uh, he has a bigger health bar uh, as a boss is doing Terraria, and you can also get uh, the trophy and a mask based on him. Uh, he's a pretty big threat, he's very, you. very tanky, and... Uh, I have a max on this end, so... Um, can anyone hear Apparently you? our stream can't hear you, and levels are a little low. Can you turn up a little bit? Um, yeah, sure. Cause why not? <laughs> uh, is this better? This is uh, quite quite loud now. Sure, I, I'll be <laughs> looking in the stream chat. Uh, is this better, everyone? <laughs> How about this? Please tell us. <laughs> please tell us in chat if this is better for everyone. Uh, Yo, Ryan, we're trying to get good sound levels. We had some. Uh, uh, everybody is saying before. yes. So. Uh, perfect. Let's okay. Just, perfect. Yeah. Let's tell just us more about the enemies again. Yeah, One more summarize time. that really. <laughs> So, uh, we have goblins, we have the goblin bombers, we have uh, all the uh, drakens, we have uh, the ogre, which is a boss. Uh, he is very tanky, powerful. Uh, he does what you expect him to do in Dungeon Defenders 2. He uh, has a very large club, and he hits you with this club, and it knocks you away very, very far. Um, he also drops the uh, trophy and the mask. And what I think we have a little do. something to show about the ogre, don't we? Let's blast uh, up a little, uh, little fun, little preview. Uh, yeah, you do indeed. Show it. So here is the, so here's <laughs> the ogre in action. Uh, obviously, you can see he does his butt stomp. That's similar from our game. Nice little booger ball. Booger ball. The booger ball. It does a little bit of AOE splash. His butt stomp. Does a club swing. He looks pretty beefy. I mean, to be honest, he's the monk did monk's not, did trying not really hard, <laughs> nope. but it's not gonna work out for the monk. Then he just he just breaks into chunks. Poor monk. Poor poor monk chunks. If only that monk had maybe some DD two themed weapons that they could use. Do you guys, are you guys I mean, adding any of that? You alright? Uh, yes, we are adding uh, quite a few items based on the defenders too, um, ranging from the defenses that we've shown in a previous uh, steel image uh, spoiler. <laughs> and um, some weapons that we won't be talking about too much here. Uh, you'll have to see them for yourself. Yeah, that, that is important to, point out, uh, important to point out. We aren't showing everything that's in the update here. We're showing a good bit, but there's still uh, plenty that you guys will get to discover in both Terraria and Dungeon Defenders too. That's true. We're gonna, sh yeah. We're showing a lot, obviously. Uh, we're gonna leave a little bit uh, for players to discover, but uh, let's move on. Do we have the Most boss? The Let's let's yeah. let's show the set big up, set up the, the set big up the map with let's actual do it. defenses though. You know. Well, I'm just gonna show that yeah. we're gonna go over the defenses. <laughs> All right, so we'll bust out the 
So he, here we're going to bring out the boss of the new incursion. Oh my gosh, he has so much health. Good old Demon Eye. So much health for having no defenses. <laughs> Good old Demon Eye. Are we going to be able to burn him down a little bit? For, uh, uh, that's nah, evil. That's, that's so right. the Eye of Cthulhu spawns Demon Eyes just like it does in the first phase. Oh man, that, that, yeah, wrecked. that ended quick. Uh, uh, yeah, since Eric is dead now, he'll actually go after your four, so this should end really fast. Oh, unless I think you have God Core on, that's why. Cheats, uh, developer cheats. hacks. And uh, yeah, so in the first phase of the fight, he behaves very similar to how he does in Terraria. Uh, he stays away from the player, uh, follows them around, charges in, goes for an attack, spawns demon eyes periodically. Uh, in the second phase of the fight, after you get him down to about 50% health, he'll actually transform, just like he does in Terraria, and then the fight just goes, goes insane. That's pretty awesome. I can't, like, I've only fought him once, but I didn't really get to, like, do his full ordeal. I've only, like, <laughs> seen it a little bit, but I, I, I can't wait to actually do this on my live account and actually do the boss fight. All right, so let's uh, let's move into talking about the dryad a little bit more. Kind of do a little. We're gonna do a little deeper dive in kind of the dryad and her mechanics. Obviously, we posted the the hero trailer yesterday, which which went over them a little bit. Um, but we're gonna load her up here for you guys and kind of go through uh, her abilities and her towers and kind of talk about why those you know came to be and why we made the ones that we did. Um, so yeah, Dan, do you want to start us off? Sure. Um, let's see, where do we begin? She uses swords. Uh, we thought uh, that was going to be a good idea, obviously, to make her use swords. We were bringing in a bunch of Terraria weapons, and you guys might have seen some of them already. Uh, and, I mean, the team really loves Meowmir, so we really wanted to see the Dryad <laughs> using Meowmir. I mean, I really love Meowmir. <laughs> I really love Meowmir in Terraria, so I was super hyped when I saw that in our game. Uh, I think, yeah. And uh, so it, it just made... And there you see Meowmir right there with the... Uh, special stat or the passive that it gets and what it does. Do you want to show that off real quick? Yeah. yeah so, uh, very similar. We should mention um, the Dryad uh, actually has the swords like about the Terrarian size standard compared to the body. <laughs> That's true. Uh, they are all to scale. Uh, but yeah, the Meow Mirror behaves the same way. Fires a little bouncing kitty head projectile that detonates, deals damage in area uh, as you would expect it to. Look at that rainbow trail. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Brian, our VFX artist, did uh, a very good job. He and Josh are getting this, getting Meowmir just feeling. We did like three or four versions of Meowmir actually before we got this uh, aesthetic for him all set up. So, good job there, everybody. So, what's her first ability about? Her first ability is obviously Dryad's Blessing. Uh, we didn't, it, it was a no brainer. We we're going to make the Dryad, so obviously we need a Dryad's Blessing. Uh, uh, very similar to what it does in Terraria, it buffs up your armor, so it buffs up her armor. Uh, a bunch of leaves swirl around you and protect you. Right? Kind of similar visuals to what it does in uh, Terraria. And uh, when she's in nightmare mode, uh, which or sorry, not nightmare, in corrupt mode, <laughs> <Nightmare> mode. <laughs> uh, it kind of swirls these razor leaves around her, and if he goes up to dummies, you'll see it deals significant damage over time to them. The thing about corruption mode uh, is that's like your Super Saiyan mode. Uh, it's what her secondary attack is but it drains her mana bar at a substantial rate, so you'll want to balance that out. And that's one thing we can't really show well here in the tavern, because you know normally you have unlimited mana in the tavern, mm -hmm. but in an actual combat match, you're kind of balancing the mana gain and mana yeah. drain. Yeah, yeah it's, it becomes important to figure out, do I use my Starfall to gain mana right now? Do I use my Starfall, Starfall to do the Corrupt Starfall? Because Corrupt Starfall does a huge amount of damage and yeah, things, things like that. But anyway, on to her second ability. Uh, she play, She basically throws um, a satchel a purifi of purification powder or corruption powder, depending on what uh, mode she's in, which kind of uh, gr grows a small pocket of the Terraria uh, mushrooms. And uh, what this area does, it kind of slows enemies that are inside it significantly, and it will heal players over time that are standing inside it. So if you're playing with your friend, and he's the squire or the monk, and he's having a hard time surviving, or he's up against an ogre or some boss, or even the demon eye, uh, you can pop that right underneath them, slow enemies around him, and uh, heal, uh, heal your buddy. In Corruption, uh, she spawns these, uh, these mushrooms that deal significant damage over time to enemies. And once the effect ends, which I don't think you'll get to see on the dem uh, dummies because they're not, you know, they're not the actual enemies, but once the effect ends, it actually spawns these entangling roots that wrap around the enemies, stunning them for a duration. So it's a really good uh, AoE damage over time effect. And then uh, shortly afterwards, it will 
uh, route anyone that survives. That's a pretty good effect. And we showed that a little bit on the Meet the Dryad trailer. It yeah, had yeah. to have the roots come up. So definitely check out our Meet the Dryad trailer on YouTube if you want to see a little bit more about kind of the abilities and their full VFX. Um, and if not, you know, check out the patch coming on Tuesday on the 15th, and you'll get to see it in game. What about her third ability? Her third ability, uh, we, had to, we had to do Starfall, right? Uh, a, a lot of us play a lot of Terraria, and something that has happened to almost all of us is we'll be playing a map or fighting a boss or taking on a bunch of enemies and that star would fall and just insta give them. Uh, so it had to be her, uh, her ultimate. So you pick a target location uh, and then stars kind of fall down. They deal damage to any enemy they pass through. So if there's like a low flying, uh, flying enemy or if there's a bunch of enemies clustered, it'll deal damage to all of them. In her purification mode, when she's not corrupt, it doesn't deal a significant amount of damage. But the important thing about it, when you go towards the pickup, uh, you can't see it now because he has infinite uh, mana already and he's at his cap. But you, she'll actually pick up the stars and gain celestial power. But in corruption form, uh, she loses the mana gain from it, but gains a significant AOE explosion when it lands and then it lingers and does a damage over time effect. This is, and you know, one of my favorite things about her is actually jumping and flying around and just bombarding enemies from the sky, uh, like Eric's going to show now. So. It's, it's a lot of fun to just fly over a bunch of enemies and watch them all explode. Really unleashing the Star Fury, though. <laughs> Star Fury, yes. That, we actually decided <laughs> to hold that, hold that back for a bit, but we, did, uh, we do have a version of Star Fury uh, in our game, but uh, you guys won't earn it initially. We might add that later in the future. It was, it was too powerful. It was, it was too powerful. A little too powerful. We also didn't want to be like, oh, the Dryad has this cool Starfall <laughs> ability, but also... And the Star Sword. <laughs> and now there's stars everywhere. There's stars everywhere. <laughs> So I guess we can get kind of started. So she has, she's unique where she has pretty much five defenses. She, she does have five defenses, yeah. Um, well, I guess let's get started and talk about them. Uh, so when we were doing her defenses, uh, we wanted them all to be themed ar around you know, creatures in Terraria, right? Uh, the main thing we wanted to focus on is you know, th this idea that she's bringing creatures in from Terraria to help her fight. Uh, um, you know, it kind of made thematic sense as well. So you can build this world tree and upgrade it twice, and it actually functions as a really good blockade. So you can actually line it up and use it as blockades, which you'll see in gameplay footage potentially later. And it creates this little pocket that you see um, around, uh, you see that green line. And within that green line, the dryad can summon her defenses. So you can't really spawn things outside the sphere of influence. And if the tree gets destroyed for some reason and you have defenses inside it, they get disabled. But for the most part, you won't really be running into that unless you know something goes terribly wrong. Uh, and yeah, Eric's showing that right there. You can't really uh, place it unless it's within uh, within the sphere of influence. There we go. It kind of so what's that first tower that he just placed? The first tower that he just placed is the moss hornet's nest. Uh, obviously, very jungly themed. She puts down a small little baby nest that kind of spawns these moss hornets uh, that uh, our Karaya uh, friends will recognize that kind of linger around the tower when there's no enemy within uh, the range of the tower. But when an enemy steps into the range, they kind of shoot forward, go to the enemy and just stick to them, swirling around them, dealing damage to them, uh, stinging them over and over and over until the target dies. When the target dies, uh, the hornet will find a different target. So uh, in fact, uh, these are actually new or, or a new tower type that we're adding to Dungeon Defenders 2 and it's kind of this like uh, AI pet kind of towers that spawn things that are actually moving around on their own accord and doing things. So uh, they look pretty cool. And in corruption mode, she spawns an additional, or each nest will spawn an additional uh, hornet that'll go and attack a different target. Sweet. What's her next tower? Her next tower is the Harpy's Perch. Uh, so Harpy! this is, yeah, it's a really good looking tower. Um, uh, but yeah, it's a kind of very long range uh, defense. It has, you know, in insane range. You can't really even see where it ends over Jeez, there. Yeah. So I can put it all the way back. Uh, as you can see that right there, yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, it picks a target within, within that range and it'll uh, start firing feathers uh, at the target. Uh, uh, but it does it kind of periodically, so it kind of plays an animation and then continuously begins to spawn these projectiles that deal damage over time or deal damage on hit. And when you go into corruption mode, uh, the arrows actually pierce uh, and hit an additional target. And, and, they, and she actually deals a bit more damage as well. That's pretty awesome. I really like how corruption mode affects 
you know, pretty much all the abilities mm -hmm. yeah. and gives them additional, you know, additional things for maintaining that form. Mm -hmm. And similar to the Lava Master, uh, you don't have to be in corrupt form with the Dryad that built the tower. So if you have, like, your Builder Dryad and your Damage Dealing Fighter Dryad, if your Fighter Dryad is in corrupt form, she'll affect all of the defenses that your uh, account has built. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. What is her third <laughs> defense? Third. I because guess it's we, third or fourth or I mean, it's, we, her third, third like, offensive major, defense, yeah. I guess. We couldn't really do a Terraria crossover without uh, involving the slimes in some way. They're the first enemy that you really see <laughs> most of the time in Terraria when you're playing. And they're just so like iconic and cute, so we had to do something with them. So you basically build like a trap, very similar to the hornet's nest that periodically spawns different slimes. Yes! <laughs> parasol slime. <laughs> you have a really rare chance of finding a uh, parasol slime, which uh, happened right there. But yeah, it spawns up to three slimes that kind of linger around, and they act kind of like widow mines or mines that are kind of just waiting. When an enemy walks up to them, they'll hop around and hop towards the target, and when once they touch the target, they detonate and deal damage in a large area. Uh, during corruption mode, the damage is increased, and they actually oil enemies, so then you can hit them with a fire source and then ignite them and do things like that. Yeah, they explode in like almost like a Splatoon paint. They do explode. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty sweet. It's super good in Splatoon paint. All right, what is the final defense? The final defense. We actually had like different ideas for her final defense. Then we saw the angry Nimbus, and we thought we had to do something with the with the angry Nimbus. He just looked so interesting, and we could do so many like cool things with it that we had to go with this defense. Uh, but basically, very similar. It's an AI spawner, so it spawns this little uh, cloud guy that looks like a. a cloud mixed with their alien brain and it has, he's dangling his hands <laughs> he's dangling his hands he's super like uh, lethargic and lazy doesn't really want to be around uh, but if there's a target uh, within his uh, range and he has a substantial range uh, the cloud will actually travel towards the target uh, and hover over it dealing damage raining uh, basically raining uh, down on the enemy and dealing damage over time it'll periodically drench them too and if you switch into corrupt form uh, he, uh, every few seconds, he'll actually emit a lightning zap, so you can actually get the uh, drench electrocute combo just by using this one tower. And he plays some really cute uh, animations when you toggle between combat phase and build phase that you guys will get to see in a bit. So she has a lot of things that kind of combo. I mean, you have you know the oiling slimes, you have the drenching Nimbus. I guess who can also stun his own targets. Stun his own targets, yeah. But uh, she has a lot of kind of, I guess. Uh, you know, additional effects on her defenses. Mm -hmm. And uh, something that you guys might have noticed, uh, Eric's been doing it for a while, she has double jump, and if you press space a third time, or if you uh, press your jump button and hold it on your second jump, you'll actually turn into fly mode, and she can just fly, fly around as much as she wants to. And we have different accessories for wings and things like that. Yeah, Roy, you are right? Did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I was about to say it's about uh, similar to the Cloud in a Bottle combined with wings in Terraria, uh, just as you expect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, uh, even when she jumps, you see this cloud poof that happens under her feet, just like the uh, cloud in the bottle. There we go, second jump. Yeah, good times. And that's her, obviously, the skin themed around a certain, uh, certain, certain armor, armor set, set from, uh, yeah. from Terraria. And it's a pretty cool one. It's pretty cool. Yeah, not gonna lie. I love the wings also. The Might wings. toot our own horn a little bit, kind of looks dope, you know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, but let's start, so we have a, like, this patch is so huge, so let's just continue to kind of blast through uh, the content. Let's let's talk about some of the weapons that we're adding. Oh man, we added like, I think 13 weapons in total from Terraria. Uh, each hero that exists in Dungeon Defenders 2 gets a weapon. Um, there's, uh, there's the Bone Glove, there's the uh, Mega Shark, there's obviously Meow Mirror, you're looking at him. Uh, there's the Terra Blade, uh, there's, there's just... All of these, you see them over there on the left. EB gets the Celebration Canister. Uh, I, like, I really love the Apprentice one. Uh, maybe you guys will get to see that in the future. Uh, so what are the tabs up at the top here? Oh, yeah. So I guess we can also talk about the Merchant. The little uh, yeah. Dwarf. What do we call him now? What's his actual The official? Wayfarer? The Wayfarer. I really wanted to just call him Dwarf. But, you know, <laughs> all the, like, smart people were like, meh. That's, that's a little lame. So, I tried, guys. He was going to be Dwarf forever. But nobody else liked it, so, so then I went back to my corner and cried. Yeah, the Wayfarer, or <laughs> codenamed Dorf. <laughs> codenamed uh, Dorf. <laughs> he, uh, uh, he's a new vendor. He kind of opened up shop with this update. Um, 
while you're playing the Terraria map, you can gain the Souls of Night, right? Is that That's right. That's the Souls of Night as a currency, and if you go up to Dorf, you can actually see them right there. Yeah, Souls of Night, same icon that you expect. They kind of look cool on the ground. Maybe you'll get to see them uh, at some point in the future, but you can They're go up fancy. to... They're fancy. Yeah. You go up to Mr. Wayfarer Dorf, and he will... Souls. Oh, look at that. You can spawn a bunch of them, and that's, that's what they look like. <laughs> I like how you say that's what they look like, like you've never seen them before. <laughs> like, oh yeah, that's what they, that's look, what like. they look like. I have never seen this. <laughs> anyway, so you go up to Dorf with, <laughs> with all your currency, and you can buy uh, those weapons, and you know, they have the passives guaranteed on them that proc the cool effects that the Terraria weapons do. And the tabs you see on the top uh, are, you know, if you want to get a Nightmare version that will match the eye power of the Nightmare 1, Nightmare 2, Nightmare 3, Nightmare 4. And obviously, the higher you go, the more expensive that they get. Uh, we wanted to have the campaign tier for all our, you know, Terraria players who haven't played Dungeons and Dungeons 2 before. They can jump right in, go up to the portal, play Normalize. We'll talk about what Normalize is in just a second. Uh, gain some Souls of Night and quickly buy these weapons and try them out. Uh, and you can see the eye power differences there and things like that. Should we show them that Mega Shark? Yeah, show, show them what it does. Uh, show them some more weapons. I mean, we'll show a little bit. We show a little bit of the Meow Mirror, which yeah. is kind of what we we're planning on. I mean, people saw it in the mm -hmm. in the screenshots and the trailer and yep. stuff. We kind of gave that away a little bit. Uh, but so, what's special about the Mega Shark and kind of what it's firing? Well, as far as meteor bullets, uh, oh. and as you'd expect them to, they will bounce. So shoot the ground; they're bouncing there. Shoot the wall; they will bounce. Uh, we did add a bunch of new projectile types uh, in this update too. We have the bouncing projectile. We have projectile that spawns projectiles <laughs> in order to do the North Pole, uh, and that's pretty cool. But yeah, the Mega Shark obviously fires the Meteor Bullets. It fires at a crazy, uh, nuts fast rate. It is, it's actually the identical uh, attack rate, I believe, to what it does in Terraria. And obviously, since she's the Gun Witch, she can use it as a broom and use it to fly. So you'll be flying on your uh, Mega Shark. It's like a broom gun. Shark hiding and projectile section. <laughs> yes. It's a broom gun. Oh, and then oh, the twice the price. Twice. The It'll twice the. Two of them. Blasting and amazingness. Mm -hmm. oh, dual Mega Shark. Should we show one more weapon? I think we might have to show one more. All right, that's the. So what? So what's this weapon? This is the Bone Glove. Obviously, the Lava Man, sir. Uh, he punches things real hard, so we had to give him a sort of fist weapon, uh, and it spawns the. Uh, it does exactly what you'd expect it to. On melee hit, it spawns these uh, bones that you know bounce around and deal damage to enemies and pierce the enemies as well, uh, dealing damage as they go through them. That's pretty awesome. And we, we even did an effect like where it changes the look of his arm too, right? Yeah, yeah. If you kind of look closely, it is that, or our version of the Bone Glove, uh, mm -hmm. matching the pixel art that uh, the fine artist at Relogic put together. That's pretty awesome. And yeah, but yeah, there's like 13 or 14 weapons. We're only giving you guys a small taste uh, of, what, of what you're going to get in the update. No. Sweet. So one thing that we're kind of doing, uh, just in addition to this update, so we've been doing kind of community challenges, you know, just for our dev streams. This is fun things to win. Usually I do a, a costume queue. Oh, we should talk about normalize. Oh, yeah, let's, talk about, let's talk about normalize really quickly. Uh, so uh, something that both uh, Relogic, Yorai, and mm -hmm. their team over there really wanted to watch out for and something that we were really careful for is we're going to, I mean, uh, there's going to be a bunch of DD2 fans trying Terraria for the first time, and there's going to be a bunch of Terraria fans trying uh, DD2 for the first time. And we wanted, we didn't want you guys to play for a long time to access the really cool content. Uh, so what we did, uh, instead, we have at least in our game we have uh, something called normalized play. You go up to that portal, you click normalize. You don't really need to worry about what's in your deck or whatever. It will give you uh, a set of four heroes completely decked out with awesome gear and. For the first time ever, you can actually try the Dryad. Uh, we've, that's something we've not done before. We've not let you kind of try out a hero uh, before you can buy her. So I wonder whose idea that was. Hmm, I that's wonder. like it's really weird, huh? <laughs> Do you know whose idea it was? I don't know whose idea it was. I, I'm very uh, lost and confused here. Yeah, I guess huh? you'll just remain. I guess we'll just never find out. On some I mean, hero. just ever. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's really cool. We added a mechanic in so you can really try this new hero before mm -hmm. you, you know, you, and then obviously. You can play normalize as many times as you want, right? And you'll gain souls, and you'll be able to, you know, use uh, unlock the Terraria weapons and use them in the campaign as you level up. And you know, like I said, it'll give you kind of a decked out four decked out characters, so you get to see what the game is like uh, as you progress through it. So it kind of gives you also a small 
a taste of things to come. And you're right. Do you want to talk about what uh, you guys did to kind of ease DD2 players into Terraria? Um, so in Terraria, we uh, have basically the game spans out quite a long time. Uh, we have a thing called uh, early mode and hard mode. Um, hard mode is quite halfway into the game, and then everything gets nuts. Um, the invasion actually. Uh, the old one's army is actually accessible straight from early mode. Uh, after you meet the bartender via a way you'll have to find out by yourself, um, you'll be able to uh, talk to him and figure out uh, how to get uh, all the Dungeon Defenders 2 content. Um, it's pretty early uh, and easy to get to, so it should be fun. So many secrets, yeah, Ray. Indeed. All so secrets. many all the secrets like secret time is 9000 <laughs> uh but yeah so then if you if you like the dryad obviously after you try it out as, as many times as you want you normalize kind of mess around play with her build uh you can just remember you can always earn her and keep her permanently in your hero deck uh, by earning the defender medals which is an earned currency in our game just via gameplay uh, or you can also purchase her immediately if you so choose uh, with our premium currency which is called gems yeah. so really there's and we'll have a bundle, right? Uh, right, we'll have includes... a bundle too that includes that shadow armor that was mm -hmm. dope looking and gives her new wings and stuff. Okay. And there might be a there might be some additional flying flight accessories <laughs> on her kit uh, that you can play around with and customize a little bit. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of see uh, Eric already set up the map in like a kind of one of the many ways that you can set up the map for the. Uh, for the Dryad, he's favoring a lot of Nimbus, uh, Nim or Nimbi, I suppose, flying Nimbi. around, yeah. <laughs> flying around, dealing damage uh, underneath them. He's uh, like, like we kind of mentioned, uh, the world trees kind of act as these really cool uh, blockades uh, that prevent the enemies from going through as your uh, other towers deal damage to them. Yeah, those world trees are really awesome. Uh, there's also a bunch of other stuff that we added to this patch. Uh, I don't want to go through it. But, like, honestly, this patch obviously comes with a, a ton of bug fixes. We all, I think we were able to fix around 25% of the community submitted approved bugs that we had that we got in on our new bug reporting website, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. That's really huge news. Yeah. We changed up a little bit um, about some of the, the melee heroes. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, all our melee heroes are... I guess if we have some first-time viewers uh, that don't really know, DD2 is still kind of in early access, so we heavily, uh, we've been iterating on things and we're pushing to get it out of early access uh, pretty soon. Uh, but uh, the Monk and the Squire have had two significant changes to them, like, like um, Eric showing you. Now their fast swords and their heavy swords, or the fast polearm and heavy polearm, uh, are now following the new system where you don't really have root motion anymore. Uh, so you can easily move around and you have more control and the combat just feels better. And we up their What's health. root motion for those that might not? Root motion, uh, for those people who might not know, when you, uh, when you used to melee attack before in Dungeon Defenders 2, it would move you a certain distance based on the animation. Uh, we removed that and had the animations only kind of upper body only, so you can actually control the mo movement yourself and you have just uh, more control uh, based on that. And also... Uh, for uh, people who have been asking for this for a while and we tried it out with the Mystic before the Dryad, uh, we wanted to improve the survivability of melee heroes and the Squire and the Monk have a, a base a damage resistance kind of built into them now, so by default they'll take less damage from attacks and we made some adjustments to their survivability so they should be more viable as combat heroes. That's pretty awesome. So just as a fun thing, getting back to kind of the community contest thing I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, we're doing another community contest. We're calling it the Eye of Cthulhu Screenshot Contest. And we're going to look for, starting on Tuesday, we'll put up a thread on the Dungeon Defenders 2 forums. And we want people to just submit submit the coolest looking screenshot that you can of the Eye of Cthulhu boss fight on the Incursion. Uh, just of you fighting the boss. You know, it can have def anyone's defenses in it. You don't like have to use Dryad. It just, just any cool looking screenshot of fighting the Eye of Cthulhu that you can come up with. And uh, the winner of that will be decided by our art team. They'll kind of you know pick which one's the most readable and fancy aesthetically looking, pleasing. aesthetically pleasing and fancy. Uh, and then we'll, you know, we'll give someone a costume of their choice. Uh, oh, we should have the artists that pick it do like an art critique. 
Ooh, an art critique. Yes. A nice little, like, <laughs> this screenshot was nice, but it kind of had an oaky tone it invoked that the did not didn't it feel good on my palate. That I was expecting. And, uh, yes, this wasn't quite the flavor I was expecting. <laughs> uh, so just to go over some things that maybe moving in a, just a little bit in kind of our dungeon keeping, uh, just talking about just uh, some of the stuff that we've recently done. Uh, I just want to talk about a recent patch. We just had our Halloween patch. We added in the Burning Soul skeleton skins into the game. That was a pretty fun patch. We brought back uh, the old Incursion, Spooky Incursion. Got to fight with Malthus. Was that his name? Okay. Mal I was like, Malthus? Okay, good. I uh, got to fight Malthus again. Uh, you know, Before the Dryad, we added in the Mystic Hero, who is very awesome. You keep the Serpent God appeased and do cool purple laser beams all over the place. <laughs> Uh, you know, before that, we added in our campaign revamp, which really changed the new game experience and progression. Uh, one thing that's really cool with that for new players and Terraria players that come into the game uh, wanting to get the Dryad, like, for free via earned gameplay, uh, once you play through the campaign, I mean, you'll have, you'll have 5,000 Defender Medals at the end of the campaign, giving you a really good boost to getting a hero of your choice. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, we do weekend events all the time to try and, you know, help help you get some more Defender Medals as well. Most likely the next one will be a Mission Madness, where you get a da additional daily missions that you can do over Defender Medals, uh, but it'll definitely give people a, a viable way to earn her. Um, you know, just for playing the game and having fun and having a good time in Dungeons and Defenders too. Um, some of the things we're still working on, obviously we need a little more time with the, uh, the inventory systems. We were really trying to kind of pump that out, but we really want it to be more polished and yeah, yeah, we're still, still working on the inventory, and there's, I mean, every every few weeks we have, uh, we release an update, so, uh, like I said, we're still kind of working on version 1.0 for Dungeon Defenders 2, so there's plenty of improvements to come, uh, but yeah, there's a whole lot of content for you guys to enjoy already uh, in the game, and yeah, uh, what else? Are there other gifts that your eye has had prepared? For I think there's show? one or two. Yes, there's a few. Yeah, let's, why don't you show let's, let's show off uh, show off a fun little uh, enemy that's coming out of Terraria. So as you can see here, uh, might be your friendly hometown kobold <laughs> that got added to Terraria. Obviously, it looks like it behaves very mechanically similar. Uh, do you want to talk about kind of making that a little bit, Yorick? Um, sure. Uh, basically, we looked at the enemies from the Defenders 2. Uh, we started um, categorizing them by how uh, they affect the game, and we started building the Old Ones army uh, based on what would be more fun and interesting. And of course, Kobolds are a very um, attention-taking enemy. So we wanted to put them in, and we wanted to make them as panic-inducing as possible, and he's complete with sound and the special effects, and he's relentlessly chasing you. Uh, even if you try to uh, run away from him with wings and all the uh, movement accessories you can have in Terraria, he will keep chasing once he starts. Um, so yeah. Uh, we got the, uh, the art reference from uh, uh, Danielle on the uh, from Trendy, and we uh, basically adapted it, and we added the special effects. And here he is. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And do we have one more to kind of show off, perhaps? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a, a little screenshot of the the new NPC that's coming to Terraria. You want to talk about him a little bit, Yuri? Um, sure. So this is the Tavern Keep. Um, he is obviously from Dungeon Defenders. Um, he, wa uh, we picked him because uh, we wanted someone who fits into the Terraria universe and doesn't like uh, serve uh, a goal that we already have from our 20 uh, uh, plus NPCs. Um, in Dungeon Defenders 1, he served the biggest role possible because he was the only guy in the tavern. Um, so we knew that people would recognize him and he felt like he fits. Uh, we gave him a little spotlight and uh, we put him in Terraria and um, we actually had an ulterior motive here. Uh, back in the first versions of Terraria, back in 2011, um, people used to build uh, taverns near the spawn point in the game and uh, it was kind of a common um, habit, you could say. So he really fits into that um, and making the entire place more lively. That's pretty awesome. Excellent. Yeah, it's pretty. Lots pretty of content. Lots I mean, he looks really good. I really like the pixel art 
of like the various Man, dungeon defenders. You haven't things. seen. You haven't seen the Dark Mage. You haven't seen. I know. There's so there's so many. Cool there's things. so many things that we want uh, to show. Yeah. Yeah, we actually had like 40 versions of the Tavern Keep uh, before we picked the one we'll use. Yeah. Um, Chrono, uh, Victor, uh, the artist who worked on him, uh, put a lot of attention into the small details. And uh, yeah. He came out really, That's, really nice. Yeah, he came out really nice. It looks really good. I mean, all the work. Honestly, working with you guys has been awesome. A lot of fun. Like, tons of fun. Oh, we should talk about how this even started. Yeah, maybe we should talk about a little backstory, because <laughs> we may or may not have skipped that in the beginning. We did table. skip that. Round table. We'll go round table. We'll do it. Let's do round table. Round table. The faces behind the voices. Except what for up? Yorai. Except for Yorai's like the tree in the corner. Yeah, Yorai's the little, <laughs> little tree icon. We sort of added him. I mean, he's added... Meh. <laughs> So uh, I guess what's a question that we were asked a lot is like how, how did this update come to be? And um, I think it was about a year ago when we were first starting our hero initiative, when we were first working on the Abyss Lord. Um, I was on a dev stream. Um, yeah, what's up? Yeah, I was, uh, I was watching the dev stream back in January, I think, and I um, was asking a question uh, on the stream and mm -hmm. suddenly uh, Blacksmith replied, uh, Danny Elp, yeah. and uh, I was like, oh, hey, I got the developer's attention. Let's talk. Um, we became pretty friendly, and mm -hmm. we took it uh, to Steam to try and talk more outside from the Twitch environment. Uh, we ran some jokes, and we talked about how cool it would be to maybe have a crossover at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we went like, hey, why not? And we <laughs> got the people necessary for it to uh, get talking, and here we are yeah. after 10, 11 months. Yeah, it was funny uh, because I talked with Yorai a good while, uh, you know, uh, just like talking about games and things we like, what he likes about Dungeon Fenders too. I remember he was showing me the figurines that he bought from uh, mm -hmm. one of the like 3D printed uh, Dungeon Fenders figurines. And uh, he was like, oh, I'm the lead dev developer at Terraria. I'm like, well, that's really cool. We love your game. He's like, oh, we love Dungeon Fenders too. We should do something. We're all playing. Are we best friends now? <laughs> Yeah, he's like, oh, our whole team plays your game. I'm like, well, the majority of our team play your game. Well, why don't we do a crossover? Let's see what happens. We and even yeah. set up like yeah. we even set up a server to play your game while we were working on things from your game. So we could be like, oh yeah, how does that again? Like, oh yeah, let's use that weapon. <laughs> like, how was that, dude? Yeah, it was it very was, fun. It was fun, and I'm surprised we managed to keep it like under wraps for the better part of a year. That was probably yeah interesting. Good job, uh, trendy yeah. and real logic. Yeah, everyone did a great, uh, fantastic work on that. Um, we are actually huge defenders of Dungeon Defenders 2. Me in particular, I was uh, I played Dungeon Defenders 1 on the day it came out, and I left it on for like four days. Um, I know the game uh, pretty well, and I really think like this invasion uh, can bring a lot to Terraria, and it's really fantastic. How many how many hours would you say you have in Dungeon Defenders 2? You're right. Um, I think I have well over 500. Uh, some of it might be AFKing, but a small <laughs> Only 500, Only yo, Ryan. Right. <laughs> Come <Over>. on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so definite, definite true fans of both games. Yeah, it's pretty sweet to be working with those guys. and uh, they, I mean, they have just an awesome game, so it's cool that a bunch of them were fans of our game. Mm -hmm. uh, let's move right into where, obviously it took a long time to kind of talk about all the content that's coming. And we started late. And, and we started late things. and all the things. Uh, so we're going to move right into uh, answering community Q&A kind of as quickly as we can, right, I guess. Let's do it. I'll try um, to keep an eye on chat. If yeah, let's keep an eye on chat for any questions. Uh, if you have any questions for Yorai as well, uh, please try to put them in chat. We'll try to we'll find try to them, them yeah. and answer them and Ask them to Yorai, and we'll see what he says. Uh, but we'll start off with a question from Knows No Limits. Any plans to add new enemies to the core game and not have them specific to an incursion? And is the Masquerade back coming to PS4? Uh, absolutely. Uh, all we've been doing right now is like, oh, here's a bunch of new enemies, but they're on an incursion. They're, to be honest, that's kind of like a test that, that we're using. If, you, if you've been a long-time viewer of our dev stream, uh, a few milestones, or not milestones, we talk about milestones, but a few dev streams ago, uh, we kind of talked about some enemies or the future of enemies in Dungeon Defenders 2. And to be honest, we've been kind of using incursions as this test bed to try out ideas and stuff like that. And we have another really, really cool, get it, cool, really cool inversion, uh, incursion. I don't. <laughs> Come, Azeroth will get it, he'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, where it <laughs> has some really, really cool enemies uh, added to Dungeon Defenders 2, but after that, 
we're planning, like we did with the journey begins, uh, a massive update to how we're uh, doing itemization and enemies and things like that. And that's when all those experiments that we've been trying in incursions is going to make its way into the rest of the game, and the whole experience will just feel very different. And as for the Masquerade pack, I don't think that's coming to PS4. I know we're bringing the Burning Souls pack with the uh, the skeleton skins, but otherwise, like the PS4 is going to be getting you know some new stuff on their store. So keep an eye out for that. We'll be we'll be updating. I mean, there's a ton of stuff getting updating updated just for the game in general in the next coming months. Uh, so just keep an eye out for like all the changes that we're making. So. Yeah, there's a question in chat. Uh, Mrik, M-R-R-I-K, is asking if DD2 is like DD1. He remembers DD1 being a MOBA, so, or DD2 being a MOBA. A long time ago, DD2 originally was going to be a MOBA. Then we canceled it, and we started working on this, so it's been kind of a long journey. Good. Yeah, DD, <laughs> DD2 is uh, pretty much uh, a direct sequel to Dungeon Defenders 1. It's the same action tower defense gameplay uh, you've come to expect. It is still in early access, and we are still working on certain things that We'll make a huge deal over the next few months, but uh, it is meant to be a true sequel to Dungeon Defenders 1. So here's the most important question, I think, of the entire stream. Any tentative release date for the Barbarian? This is the most important question of all, and I agree. I'm spider Dan X. <laughs> we have the Barbarian <laughs> designed. We have his animations done, but that's pretty much it for now. Uh, like I said, uh, we've been doing Heroes for a while. We have about 10 heroes now total in our game, which yep. is... Are pretty cool because the whole point of this year was to add as many of them as we can to the game uh, but right now the main focus is end game the main focus is inventory you know like itemization making sure the game just feels good plays well is a lot is really entertaining and we have so many things planned that I can't really talk about which will make a huge difference uh, to the game and but one, after one thing we can say is just <laughs> that you know our, our focus is is really on making the end game and those systems feel really good. You know, like we're kind of, we're taking a little break from the heroes, like not forever. I mean, it'd be sweet to obviously get the barbarian in as soon as possible and stuff like that. Uh, but we're giving a little extra time to mm -hmm. the, to the systems and the fun end game mechanics that people are really, mm -hmm. you know, searching for. Quick question from chat. Oh. Uh, Fly, I can't really pronounce his name, but he's asking if we are going to add other NPCs from Terraria? Or, or is it just a Dryad? For this update, it's just a Dryad, but uh, who knows what will happen in the future. We really loved working with Logic, and they uh, really enjoyed working with us. And we both have some content left over that we mm. didn't actually make it in. Uh, but yeah, and we, when we were first thinking about which hero, we were considering all the NPCs, but we settled on the Dryad because she was probably the most interesting and iconic NPC. She was pretty dope. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. She's we all saw her. Like, she's, she's dope. Why can't we see our movement speed stat? <laughs> um, well, you will be able to see it potentially in the future. Oh! <laughs> yes. And will we get builder weapons in the Terraria patch? Uh, no. Uh, because we wanted to stay or as true as possible to the Terraria weapons, we didn't want to like take Meowmere that spawns a Meow head that spawns like something. We didn't want to do that. We wanted this to be like a fanfare celebration for Terraria, so we wanted to implement the weapons as you know as much as possible. The Apprentice does have a staff that builds something, mm -hmm. and that's probably the closest that you'll get to a Terraria weapon that uh, feels like a defend defender weapon. Can you shed any light on how you'll be dealing with the multi-buffing exploitation in the long run? Uh, yes, we'll be squashing it. Uh, we'll be crushing it like a <laughs> tiny bug. <laughs> we already, Eric, uh, we, we worked this milestone to fix a bunch of those issues. Uh, we had some issue also with the world tree, right? Where because there were blockades, a world tree would buff a different world tree and they would just buff each other to, <laughs> to like infinity infinitely. Uh, so, yeah, we're fixing those issues. Uh, I have obviously, a question from chat. What's the, what's the question? How did we decide what weapons to add to our game? Oh, Terraria. Oh, that's a really good question. Well, uh, Meow Mir was absolutely. Terraplade was absolutely. So yep. those were like those went without say. Uh, then we started to look at each hero. You know what did they use? The Huntress uses bows. What's the most iconic bow? Tsunami is pretty iconic. But you know all the tsunami does in Terraria is actually spawn more projectiles. The cool part is the am the ammo that you use on the bow. So we did, did two versions of the tsunami. One with Jester ammo, uh, and you know things along those lines. We had to do the Mega Shark. That was a perfect you know fit for. Uh, the Gun Witch, and we kind of just took each uh, hero. We talked with the Terraria team. We asked them, "Hey, what? 
because they play so much DD2. As um, if you could pick one weapon that you know moves over to our game, what would you give the D the Abyss Lord? What would you give uh, the Gun Witch and things like that? And we kind of designed it from there. Are there any future plans on balance between heroes and defenses? Absolutely. So right now, nope. the game <laughs> no balancing. <laughs> so Everything's gonna be shipped as is. Deal with it. <laughs> Hashtag deal with it. You're done. So so right. Hashtag heroes only. <laughs> heroes only. Heroes only. <laughs> uh, so right now uh, the game uh, balance is actually pretty off uh, from where we want it to be because, like I said, we're still doing a lot of experiments with uh, a lot of different systems, and we have a lot of things planned for itemization for enemies and things along those lines. So the balance is not not there yet. Don't look at the current game state and be like, oh, this is it. This is all easy. It's going to be a piece of cake or too difficult or whatever. We have a lot planned, and we're going to work towards it over the next few months. So is there any new information that you can share about the plan changes to loot? For instance, because for instance, I can't speak English, can you definitively say whether or not some, most, all passives will be removed from gear and put onto spheres or some other system that allows direct player choice of which ones to... To use without having to worry about RNG on drops. Did Isom like sneak that in? I mean, that was like, I actually saw that question from the forums, so it's not as sneaky. Mm, okay, well, I know uh, it's legit. Uh, we have, or he sneaked it into the forums and then from there. I mean, that's that's that, we you Maybe guys have done that secret account. Yeah, you I guys have done secret accounts in the past. <laughs> so, uh, let's see, what can I say without giving too much away? <laughs> uh, we were completely overhauling our itemization system. We're overhauling how skill spheres, skill spheres work, we're overhauling how passives work, we're overhauling how even you equip things. Uh, the current loot engine in Dungeon Penders 2 has been kind of in the game for years, and we, we know a lot about it, we know what works and what doesn't, and how unclear and messy and annoying it can be. And we have a new system we're currently building, we currently just started building it, we approved the design just a few days ago, uh, that is it's, it's, it's a pretty big deal. Yorai right has seen it. Maybe Yorai, right, you want to, uh, being a player who has played for 500 hours, can you give like a thumbs up or thumbs down on the future of Dungeon Defenders itemization? Um, I've seen the system that you talked about. Um, it sounds very fun, a lot more customizable than the original and long lasting. Um, should I say any more? Uh, nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. But I mean, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what we can say is just that we're trying to change things to make, you know, players have a little more investment, a little more customization in kind of how they play the game uh, and, you know, give yeah. them something to be doing yeah, yeah. that's more interesting, you know? Absolutely. And we look forward to talking about that stuff with you. Cause I can't wait. I, I can't mean, wait. I really can't wait to talk about it personally. I, I do too. As like a player of the game before coming here, I'm like, yes. Uh, quick question from the chat. Is there a point to the Dryas normal form as opposed to... Oh, I lost the chat. Oh, I lost the question. But, uh, is, there is there a point, point to the normal form? form? Uh, yes, there is. Um, her you know, abilities do, do different things in different forms. Uh, the most important thing about her normal form is that the Starfall gives you mana. And you need that mana in corruption form. So you'll be constantly flip-flopping between the two and trying to decide uh, how to spend that mana. Oh, and, and something to note about the Starfall ability, which we didn't talk about. Uh, if you hit a target five times, you get a stack of Starfall, which is that number five in the corner. So it's a kind of new mechanic that we're adding to D2. Anyway, more questions. More questions. Are there any plans to revisit existing costumes and add more accessories? The more recent ones feel very empty without at least some options. Could you repeat that question? I mean, I understand the question. Okay. Um, are there plans to revisit existing costumes and add more accessories? We'd like to. That'd be really cool to add more stuff to it. Honestly, right now, it's not really like the priority to do more uh, additional costume stuff because we're really trying to work on kind of some of the systems that we've been meaning to work on for a long time uh, and I think are honestly like more important to players in terms of gameplay. We're working on more gameplay systems, and then honestly, we might go back and do a bunch of stuff with costumes. Uh, maybe we'll do some you know, new costumes here and there, but... I think we all liked the costumes that have a lot of accessories and stuff like that, and we want to do that. Uh, it's just obviously a, it's a balancing of the time that we have. We're a very small studio, and we want to make this game dope. Yeah. Will Uber Spears be reworked? Yes. Can't say much else. Uh, <laughs> can we have any pumpkin moon items, please? Right now, there oh. aren't any, but we might be able to in the future. We'll talk That'd about be that. dope. Yeah, that would be a cool idea. Can you talk about any of the weapons that might be coming to your game, Yorai? I know you don't want to 
Not give away too much. too much, but like give away what you can. Um, I actually do want to talk about the uh, non-weapon things. Oh. Um, in Terraria, up until now, you had four um, sentries, we call them, uh, minion users, uh, the ones who command things, uh, had only a very limited amount of uh, items that stay in the same spot, uh, ranging from the spider sentry and the frost hydra. That amount has significantly gone up. <laughs> um, we've shown uh, the ballista. Like two more and, things, or like? Uh, two digits right now, so. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. Uh, the, you have the uh, blast Ballista and the uh, Flame Burst that we've already shown, and two other uh, base defenses that uh, when, uh, were in DD2 um, are coming in, and um, they're very useful in certain parts of the game, and uh, you'll be able to get them very early compared to the Spider uh, Sentry and the Frost Hater, which is only once per world. You'll have way more than that. so. Uh, wait for it, and uh, you'll probably have a lot of fun with it. Toxic Totodial asks, Trendy Entertainment, are the new weapons only available by a dwarf, or are they random drops as well? They are only available by a dwarf. So go get the points that you want, or get the souls of night that you need, and buy exactly what you want. So the kind of more targeted farming, it's like... It is targeted farming. We didn't want to tie too much stuff to RNG, but... Uh, the effects on the passives are random, so you might mm -hmm. have to buy it a bunch of times to get the be best roll. It's the best roll on like the percentages yeah, and percentages. so on the passives. Yeah, That's yeah. pretty sweet. Will you guys increase the hero cap? Currently, it's at a max of 64 characters, and I already hit the cap. Reason why it's easy to hit the cap is because there are specific weapons for specific towers. You need to build one character for each type of tower, which makes you fill up the character cap real quick. Increasing the cap would be a very good thing to do. Wait for our itemization Wait for things. announcements. For things and stuff. Wait, just be a little bit more patient. And yes. And things will make way more sense in the future. 64, things will make more sense in the future. Yeah. No, I totally agree. And uh, do the terrier weapons roll at eye power 750? C. They don't roll at it. I mean, you they are just at it. just buy them yeah. at it. <laughs> <laughs> the Nightmare 4 tab at Dorf will give you right. 750. 750 weapons. And then you can go upgrade it. Will we ever be able to rename our heroes? One day in the future, absolutely. But like we've yeah. been saying, we have like bigger fish to fry right now. Yeah, yeah it's just bigger it's gameplay. So I know it, it's <laughs> true though, but we just have like these gameplay systems that really need like work, and we need to focus on that because it's going to make our game awesome. Work. Uh, are the dryad skins going to change her corrupted form skin too? No, the corrupted form we want to keep. Uh, we wanted to keep it fixed, kind of like the root of things, and uh, everything else about her will change. Is there an appeal process to having a bug that was submitted but was marked as declined? I think this is a community bug question. I can actually answer that question. Can you answer that question? But can anyone here just answer it? I think hopefully you guys will be able to hear him. So. Just resubmit the bug and just say, hey, this is what you said. This is my response to it, and I will take a look at it again. I'm the one who actually does all of that. So if any time it doesn't work, just resubmit it. That's P. Tire talking, by the way, a member of our QA team. And uh, badass bug master. Badass. That's a good title. Uh, important question from chat. Trendy entertainment. Are the new weapons going to be limited by time? Uh, none of this stuff is time limited. Yep. So the Terraria, the weapons, the map, the incursion, the demon eye, the skin. It's in all the game. All that stuff is in the game permanently. Same for Yorai and Relogic. All the DD2 stuff they're adding is permanent add to Terraria. It's not a limited time event. This is this is content we're both adding to our games permanently. Like, it's going to be in there. You won't miss out. Yeah. You know, the like... blacksmith and the wizard's baby will be forever <laughs> in the internet. Uh, I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> I just don't. Go ahead, Yoren. Uh, regarding uh, Terraria, uh, Senex wants me to uh, give another spoiler, but we don't have a GIF uh, to uh, no. share, or at least if I can give you. But um, in Terraria, you have uh, a limited amount of inventory. Usually, you use uh, chests to uh, make that less limited. And there's uh, per player uh, a bank that you can have items that are only for you. Um, we added a third bank uh, based what? on the Defender's Forge in Terraria. Uh, so, um, ooh, fancy. Yay. So now you can have three banks. It's, it's your piggy bank, a safe, and now the Defender Forge as well? Correct. That's pretty sweet. So increased. Uh, so now you can store all the goodies that you might be getting from this uh, new content. Absolutely. We got another question. 
So, will you always be able to get the Terraria gear in DU2? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Everything you yep. saw today is 100% added to YouTube. 10 years in the future, like <laughs> after humans no longer exist in the future, it's, when DU2 is in space, comes I don't and know. And plays <laughs> DU2, they'll be able to earn the Terraria <laughs> If we have servers up. And Yorai, is there anything? we got to wrap up the stream because we're kind of going a little bit over. But Yorai, would you like to uh, add anything more about the Terraria content, the DU2 content that's coming in Terraria? Uh, I can add that I'm very, very excited about it, and it has been a pleasure to work with Trendy Entertainment on this entire uh, thing, uh, and I hope we get to do more things in the future. <laughs> more fun things in the future. I want to do all the fun things. I mean, it's it's been really dope, and you know we've had a really good time. And again, just to kind of close out the stream, a lot of new stuff coming, new map, new hero, new incursion, new, new boss, weapons. new enemy, 13 weapons. Projectiles that spawn projectiles. Right uh, right. in, Terraria, in Terraria, we uh, mentioned that there will be bosses. We showed two, but there are three. So uh, three bosses. Yeah. So there's a secret boss. Somewhere. What? I say secrets. It's a tavern keeper. I say it's demon lord. Who knows? Demon lord would be dope. <laughs> I mean, I honestly don't know. So I'm just like, oh, demon no, lord would be sick. Like just. I know. So do demon lord because that's what I've demon requested lord now and personally. And tavern keeper. And tavern keeper, tavern and then have them duke lord. it out with fisticuffs. That's a cool idea. Done. Add it to Terraria. <laughs> All right, thanks guys for watching, and uh, you know, obviously keep an eye on our social media, both ours and Terraria's. Uh, we're on Twitter and Facebook. We're going to be talking more about you know what's coming up in the patches and posting more stuff over the weekend. Uh, the content will be going live on Tuesday. Tuesday morning, and so you'll be able to play everything we've shown you, discover all the secrets, play all the fun stuff, uh, enter the screenshot contest. I have Cthulhu screenshot contest. We'll be putting up a thread on the Dungeon Defenders 2 forums, and you can submit your boss fight screenshot after you start playing on Tuesday. Um, anything else you'd like to say, you guys? This was an awesome update. I look forward to seeing all the new faces and all the old DD2 faces, see what they think. Yorai, closing statement. Um, praise Moon Lord. <laughs> <laughs> praise Moon Lord. Thanks, guy. guys. I was a Landrian. We had Blacksmith with me, Daniel Haddad, Blacksmith. Yorai, it was a pleasure working with you and a pleasure doing this dev stream. Uh, I couldn't have asked for a better like crossover partner and company. It was really a pleasure, and I can't wait to play our content on Tuesday. Uh, again, guys, hang around in the chat. Ison's probably going to be doing some you know, last-minute giveaways and rolling for stuff. Uh, and hopefully I can, uh, I'll see you guys in game on Tuesday. Yep. See you guys. <laughs>